Ladies and gentlemen, great news if you're in the market for a mid-range GPU. Intel's battle mode is actually shaping up to be pretty impressive. And there are official reports online that we will actually see battle mode launch by the end of this year and that there are big performance improvements over Alchemist. Not only that, there is some software patch information that has emerged and it gives us some confirmation as to some of these specifications anyway to at least one of the SKUs. We're going to be talking about that stuff plus some updates to Intel's next generation processors both Arrow Lake and subsequent ones after that and we're going to get into all of that plus more after this quick message from the sponsor of the video. If you're running a copy of Windows 10, which isn't activated, of course, not only do you have to worry about the missing customization options, but there's also that annoying Windows desktop watermark reminding you to activate. Today's video is sponsored by whokeys.com, and they have an excellent price on Windows 10 Professional as well as Home Keys. Yeah, and they also, of course, sell games. I've bought a few Windows 10 keys with my own personal account to test everything was legit and worked in preparation for this sponsored video. You can pick up one of their keys for 25% off using the coupon code RGT in the checkout. There's links to their website in the video description. Also, if you're building a few systems, there's bundles available too. Again, you can check out whokeys.com and use the coupon code RGT for 25% off the listed Windows 10 key prices. So Battle Mage, of course, will be the second generation of discrete GPUs from Intel. And it's too difficult right now to know exactly how they're going to perform and how the market is going to receive them. Alchemist had a pretty shaky launch because of the driver stuff, but Honestly, things have improved quite significantly, and Battle Mage, I do think, could have a pretty good run in the market if Intel manages to get the pricing, the marketing, and the software stack all lined up. And there's a couple of good reasons for this. One, um, not everyone wants to spend a thousand or two thousand US dollars on a graphics card, shockingly enough. And while, yes, the rumors put these cards at roughly an RTX 4070 to 4080 level of performance, depending on which rumor you believe, which application is being tested, and so on and so on. And obviously things are not final yet, so software could change and clock frequencies could also differ and so on, so the usual caveats. But even if, let's hypothetically say that it's roughly around the RTX 4070 Ti, that's going to be, you know, ballpark figure of what AMD are going to be doing with RDNA 4 anyway. Remember, RDNA 4 is not going to have like a super high-end GPU this generation. That's only going to be NVIDIA, so NVIDIA, Intel, as well as AMD are all going to be fighting out for mid-range, and that actually works out to be exceptionally excellent for us, particularly given XCSS has proven to be pretty good, and the rumors, at least, are that Battle Mage are also going to have some big performance improvements for ray tracing and so on and so forth. An Anantec forum member by the name of Gav87 has actually managed to spot this, um, from the Intel GFX boot up, and uh, I will give courtesy credit to WCCF Tech here where I got this information initially. But uh, in the string, uh, you will spot BMG, obviously referencing Battle Mage, 12 gigabytes, that's obviously the quantity of RAM, 19 GPPS, that's obviously the speed of the memory, 456 gigabytes per second. I think you've probably got what that is and 192 bit bus. There's also a reference to 14 GUC, which is likely graphics unit microcontroller, which probably means there are 14 XC2 cores in this particular unit. But wait, there's more. There was a recent event held in China, and it was basically a joint collaboration between ASUS as well as Intel, and there were various elements or future Intel products, as well as, of course, Asus products being discussed here. And a Chinese blogger by the name of Little Pigeon uh, actually was at the event, and they've basically given some uh, insights into what was being discussed. This time, I'll give courtesy credit to videocards.com because it was all in Chinese, so obviously this is machine translation. Um, apparently, the Asus boards for the next generation are particularly impressive, but what I want to focus on, at least for this, is Battle Mage, which will release by the end of this year with, quote, significant performance improvements. Furthermore, Arrow Lake, the next generation of CPUs, have at least a 100 watt lower power consumption while maintaining higher frequencies. 
The updated process eliminates previous high voltage issues, ensuring stability, and performance details of this generation are still confidential, but are surely going to be impressive. Now, before I close out the video, I do want to mention some stuff regarding Intel's next generation or processors. Now, obviously, some of the stuff is not going to be relevant for a few years yet, but even so, Jakin on Twitter has been discussing Intel's future CPU plans. Now, as I'm sure everyone at this point knows, this year we're going to be seeing Intel launching Arrow Lake, and it's going to be very interesting to see how Arrow Lake versus Zen ends up in terms of multiple different product segments. Um, at this point, I think that it's very possible uh, Intel will do rather well for themselves when it comes to the multi-threading side of the equation. The problem with Ryzen really does seem to be bandwidth constrained. There are some very interesting tests. I'll leave a couple of links actually in the video description to Ryzen. And it's very interesting because the IPC of Ryzen um, in certain tests that don't strain the bandwidth actually are just absolutely nuts. Uh, FP as well as integer tests actually get quite close to the leaks that were floating around. The problem is that when you start to send tons of data to the CPU, or sorry, uh, request tons of data from the memory, rather the CPU requesting tons of data, that's when things start to fall over and it probably is a good sign that Turin is going to be absolutely ridiculous, but um, in, at least for gamers anyway, we'll have to wait and see. Obviously, at the end of the day, it's still very early at this point. BIOS updates may improve things. We haven't got the higher core count processes to test. And additionally, uh, it will be very interesting to see how the X3D variants work. And I, as always, have said multiple times at this point, don't buy anything until all of the variants are available. I would probably wait until X3D, Arrow Lake, everything is out. Because that way, you can make a good decision what is best for you. But... Uh, Jakin on Twitter basically has uh, provided a little bit of context and have said Panther Lake is going to be in 2025 and it's a premium mobile part that same year it looks like we're going to see Arrow Lake refresh happening uh, and then Nova Lake is going to be a desktop part and probably mobile as well. At this point, it's going to be extremely interesting to see how Intel's future CPU parts manage to face off against AMD. Um, again, because Zen 5 is so bandwidth constrained, it will be interesting to see what happens with Zen 6, given the rumored changes to the IOD and the packaging technologies within. Um, I did joke on Twitter that I would absolutely love uh, AMD to give... Tr uh, triple channel memory to the mainstream platforms. Obviously, that's not going to happen at any time soon, besides the fact that AM6 are almost certainly not going to be the platform of choice for Zen 6. It's probably going to be like Zen 7 or something like that, I'm guessing, for AM6. But anyway, guys, I think that's just about it for this particular video. Hopefully, you have enjoyed it. If you did, well, please leave a like on the video, and obviously, if you're not already subscribed, definitely click the sub button and also the bell icon. Also, quick question down below. Are you interested in a CPU upgrade yet? And is this just a general question, or are you just kind of waiting on the GPUs and just pretty much holding fire? I have a lot of friends who have pretty decent CPUs, like a 5800X3D one person has, another guy has a, um, what is it, I can't remember if it's a 12700 or 12900, I don't remember which one it is, but it's one of those two, it's just like, you know what, I'm good, <laughs> I just, I, it's, it's going to take a long time for me to want to upgrade from this, like, it, it, I'm good for now, like, well, I can't really argue, with that said, take care of yourselves, have an amazing day, bye for now.